What's up guys? This is Chad with Living the Van Life out here on the frozen plains of Jackson Hole, Wyoming and the Grand Tetons National Park. The temperature is negative two degrees Fahrenheit out here on the plains. We are out here set up on one of the most amazing scenes that I know of in North America. The Grand Tetons are glowing with morning sunrise light and we're out here with the camera to try and attempt to capture this scene as it unfolds. Welcome aboard this crazy cold photography expedition. Now it's about 6 a.m. Light is already starting to happen. It's about negative two degrees Fahrenheit out here on the plains of Wyoming and the Grand Tetons National Park. That, that's what we're after. We're here for photos of first light on this cold, cold wintry morning. We've got a bit of a hike to get out here to where we want to go for these photos, hoping to make it there and beat this light. Always trying to be ahead of the game. Always one step behind. Conditions are absolutely freezing right now. The camera gear just does not want to work. But the most important thing is that light is happening on those mountains right this second. And we've got to move really, really quick. Because mother nature does not wait for us. It's unfolding right before us as we speak. This is where patience becomes absolutely key are cold 
camera equipment is difficult, light is moving quick. And to get the most out of these photos, everything has to be meticulous to maximize these opportunities. I can tell you this is by far the toughest conditions I've been in for shooting any sort of photography with temperatures this low. Everything is frozen right now. The camera, the lens, the tripod. Whew. Even down to the filters have ice on them. As I always say, it's these kind of challenges that make it so rewarding when you get to come home with a beautiful photo. It has become dangerously cold out here. Fingers are frozen, toes are frozen, batteries are going from 100% to zero in less than 30 seconds. Everything, everything is just freezing up on me. My gradient filters that I use to balance the bright sunlight as it comes onto the mountain, frozen to the max. My cell phone, which I'm using to film the YouTube videos while I shoot photography on this camera, the battery went from 100% to dead in the 45 minutes that we've been out here. The GoPro battery, it went dead almost instantly, trying to make something work. Even just ice builds up on the lenses. You can't breathe on it to warm it up and wipe it off because that just makes more ice. The ice on the beard, building up on the mustache, just from the breath. That's how cold it is. I definitely underestimated what it would take to come out here and shoot in something like this. Note to self, next thing that is coming on that expedition out here to shoot photos is lots of hand warmers. It's a reminder of how quickly things could go wrong out here. And it reminds you of what it would be like in a survival situation. Wow, fingers are frozen. Definitely a learning lesson right here, folks. I've gotta shut this camera off, at least before my fingers fall off. This particular expedition here this morning might just be chalked up as a learning lesson and we come back more prepared with lots of hand warmers. Nonetheless, we're out here to experience it, out here to be part and be one with this beautiful place out here. Definitely humbling, makes you realize how small we are in the whole grand scheme of things which is important to realize. Don't let your ego get bigger than the world that we live in. It's good to realize that we're small. Makes you appreciate it more. That is for sure. Okay, I'm gonna pack things up, see if I can get myself back to the van. We'll get out and see what we can do for a sunset shoot tonight. That should be Pretty awesome. Okay.
few days ago, I got bored of my surroundings. I decided I needed a change of scenery. So I turned the key in my van again and I headed out east to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Because where else do you find a spot as magnificent as this scene right here? The Grand Tetons. And the camera just does not do it justice one single bit. This is a spot that you have to come see with your own two eyes. There is nothing that will let you down about this view right here. Came out here a little bit early ahead of schedule actually gonna cook up an early meal hang out and wait for this light to get just perfect and then we're gonna shoot some panoramic photos of this scene right here and see if we can't get ourselves some amazing photos of this just absolutely stunning view so got some work to do let's prep some food because this light is gonna change quick and I want to be ahead of the game on this one Now, speaking of food prep, a lot of you guys are always asking, well, what do you do to keep your food good and cold or frozen if I need to? Now, when it comes to living in a van or flat out truck camping, car camping, overlanding, you've always want a, some sort of an ice chest or a cooler. And to be honest with you, I tried that for uh, a number of months before I finally was fed up with having to deal with ice and food getting soaked in water and I started looking for a different alternative. And Engel is a brand that has been very, very popular in the things that I'm into, overlanding, van life, etc. And the Engel name just has a very legendary name when it comes to 12 volt coolers. This right here is a 45 quart fridge freezer combo. There's no more food going soggy. There's no dealing with having to buy more ice to keep your food cold. It plugs into my van and it runs off of the 12 volt system. It's got two compartments inside. I can actually run uh, one of the compartments as a refrigerator and I can run uh, the other compartment as a freezer. This thing will go down to like zero degrees Fahrenheit. So it gets uber, uber cold plenty enough to keep your food frozen. So the way I'm gonna use it today, I'm actually gonna unplug it and I'm gonna set it down over here so I have easy access to my little outdoor kitchen that I have set up in front of this Grand Teton scene, which is where I'm gonna cook my meal. So yeah, I just pop the plug out here. The cooler slides around. It's just like an ice chest. Many times when you're out camping, you just grab the cooler and you throw it outside, throw it under the rig, whatever. This thing has the same kind of portability, except it's way more reliable than just an ice chest. Especially out here in the snow, snow camping, this thing will stay plenty cold for as long as we need it out here because it is still insulated just like a regular ice chest. So this is the little outdoor kitchen that I've kind of prepared myself. As you guys can see, this scene out here in front of me, this is where we're gonna cook our meal right here in this snow kitchen.
Well, I figured if I was gonna be cooking in a scene as epic as this, then I better be bringing a meal that was fit for the scenario. And that is steak and prawns, and it's delicious. And what a better way to enjoy a meal like this other than right here in front of the Grand Tetons. Perfect. Such a perfect opportunity to just be able to pull the van up right here behind me set up this outdoor snow kitchen and cook a meal. Okay, this light's fading fast. We gotta move quickly. about these Grand Tetons it is it just absolutely unbelievable panoramic expanse out here all the way from the far south spreading all the way to the far north so the best way to capture this is with a panoramic shot and that's what we're going to do today with the Canon EOS R As it is out here in this Wyoming landscape but then you get that wind blowing across here and it's absolutely relentless it makes it hard on the fingers but that's also part of the challenge that makes it so rewarding when you get to come home with a shot like this that is the reward for dealing with the conditions 
this light, it's starting to happen, which is great. That's what we want. I get freaking goosebumps every time that I can just sit in these spots and observe and absorb. I, I don't know any other place in the world where you have flatness straight across to just giant mountains. It just, there's no other place like it. This has to be my most favorite spot in North America. Light changes, everything changes so quickly. So when that light starts hitting, you have to be quick on your toes. You have to be quick on the settings and just start popping off shots. You have to be calculated at it, but you also have to be very, very quick about it. All right, well, I just got back into Jackson and I am going to prepare some camera gear for tomorrow's shoot. Now, normally what I really love about living in my van is the fact that 99% of the time I can park at these locations, I can wake up, step outside my van and start shooting. However, here in the Grand Teton National Park, it is extremely hard to find anywhere to be able to park overnight. In fact, I went out to a location and I slept there and was woken up by the police early in the morning asking me to leave because parking isn't allowed there. So it's a tough situation, but I'm trying to adapt and overcome to that. So that just means I'm gonna have to wake up extra early and head out there to get there where I wanna be. I've got my alarm set for 4.30 a.m. I want to be up and out of Jackson no later than 5 a.m. The best light will actually happen before the sun rises, so we have to be there extra, extra early. Okay, I'm going to keep packing. We'll catch you guys in the morning. It is currently 4.55 a.m leaving downtown Jackson. Outside temperature said 15 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got about a 20 minute drive. It'll be interesting to see what the temperature drops between here and there in just a short 20 minute drive. When I was out there before, that was perhaps some of the toughest temperatures that I've shot in photography in, but I'm not about to be discouraged by a challenge. So I'm getting back up, getting back out there, using what I learned from yesterday's shoot to see if we can overcome the cold conditions and get the photo that we're after. So we just made it out here to Antelope Flats. The temperature is now negative four degrees Fahrenheit. That is an 18 degree drop from downtown Jackson. That is an all time record low on this here particular trip. Several things that we learned from yesterday's shoot a, get out here an hour early. Last time as I was walking out there, I already felt like I was behind the eight ball as the light was starting to get good on the mountain. B, 
we also learned that these extreme cold temperatures is extremely hard on camera batteries. So I have come with just a stack of hand warmers and my aim is to put hand warmers in just about every pocket of my vest, my coat, my pants, so that A, I can be keeping my hands warm, but B, also keeping camera batteries warm as possible. I also stopped by the store and I picked up a bag of rubber bands so that I can take the hand warmers and wrap them around the camera equipment, try to minimize the amount of freezing that goes onto the camera equipment and see if we can't capture more of this scenario that's going down out here. I'm going to at least start off this morning with a nice warm cup of tea. Also, I'm going to make prime use of these hand warmers inside my gloves because last time it started becoming marginally dangerous on my hands because you have to be able to use your fingers on the camera equipment but then again of course you want to keep them warm and it, it was starting to get very very cold on the fingers last time so I'm hoping that I can minimize that with these hand warmers. All extra batteries that I'm bringing with me are staying in my pockets on my person to maximize the body heat and keep those batteries warm. Last time I had them in the backpack but by the time I needed the extra batteries, they are already frozen and in bad condition. So by keeping those on my person, in my vest pocket, in my coat pocket, along with the hand warmers inside those pockets, I'm hoping to maximize the heat on those extra batteries. Certainly already starting to see a little bit of light trickling in on the horizon. And that is our cue to make sure and get our ass out there. I hope these things do the trick, I tell you what. Sure, it is only negative four degrees Fahrenheit. It's one thing just to go into these temperatures and just hike or camp or sit and observe, but as soon as we're gonna start filming YouTube videos and we're gonna start shooting fine art photography, that becomes a whole different challenge. So hand warmers upon hand warmers in pockets is today's goal, just to maximize the amount of heat that we've got on our person while we're out there. Oh yes, already starting to feel the heat, which is great. extra batteries going in the pockets. My iPhone is also an important part of my filming equipment. So this is going in a pocket with a hand warmer. Not so that I can text all my friends, but so that I can bring you guys along on the journey and maximize my camera angles. hand warmers inside the heavy duty gloves. Hand warmers going inside the camera gloves. I definitely feel the heat in the toe warmers already, that's good. Okay, let's do this. Well, the good thing is, this morning, it is not a perfectly blue sky. I'm on a little bit of texture in the sky over the mountains. That's what's going to reflect the beautiful sunrise as it begins to shine down.
it is definitely a decent hike out here. It seems like the further that I walk, those barns don't get any closer. And even though we're out here ahead of schedule, light is already coming quickly. Whew. Must get there. Must get there. The wind has really been whipping through here, causing some of these crazy snow drifts. You don't know if they're gonna be rock hard or powder that you're gonna sink up to your waist in. We finally got beyond the barns. So now I can turn and work my way in and find my angle. This is where I'm gonna have to put the snowshoes on though. Otherwise I'll be up to my chest in powder snow. On the front of the lens you can see I have what is called a gradient filter and it's darker at the top it's clear at the bottom so as that sunrise light starts to hit on those mountains I can put that dark part of the filter over it to hold back some of that brighter light allows us to expose the darker foreground really key in balancing out that light also for situations like this because I'm shooting at a high aperture to get a deep depth of field, then I'm using a remote trigger so that I can trigger the photos without shaking the camera. Definitely excited to have clouds in the sky. Much, much better than just a perfect bluebird day. Always wanna have a little bit of texture in the sky with clouds. Clouds reflect light, they create drama. This morning's definitely good for that versus yesterday morning. problem is that it's starting to ice over. This is insane. That filter's done. Just a little bit of moisture from me breathing on it freezes up almost instantly. Damn it. Oh well. Nothing we can do. The problem is that might be all of the light that we actually get. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's a lot of work to come out here. short-lived but I always say we don't stop until we know 500% sure that there's no more light gonna come because different waves of light can come on as the Sun rises and moves through the clouds that is the challenge that we face when we come out here and we do photography it's a roll of the dice. You're always racing the light. You just never know what you're gonna get. It's a gamble. 
Do I go here? Do I go there? Do I hit this angle? Which way is the light gonna hit? Is it gonna be this morning? Is it gonna be the next morning? When's it gonna be? You just never know. But quite honestly, that's the part that I love about landscape photography is a challenge in the lure of it. Is the fact that it gets us out here. It gets us up out of bed at 4 a.m. way before the sun rises and it gets you into amazing scenes like this. Whereas otherwise, most people are just sleeping in, staying in bed. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but uh, there's some coyotes going off over here in the background. That's pretty cool. Actually, right now, we're getting some pretty dang good light, actually. Hear coyotes off to that direction. Coyotes off to that direction. <laughs> They're definitely all around us right now. So very cool. working with the elements, you're working with mother nature. Sometimes she doesn't give you that gift, but in other times she rewards you in very, very huge ways. And when that happens, that, that's when it makes all of it worth it. small sliver of pink light just moved itself right down that mountain and it only lasted for five minutes maybe tops definitely worth making the trek out here definitely happy we did that well this sunrise light has since faded and is now gone We've got out here to this amazing place at the Grand Tetons National Park in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And it truly is a magical spot. If you guys ever get the opportunity to make it out here, I highly, highly suggest it. To be able to sit in front of these mountains, I'm always completely awestruck and I find myself being able to just sit here and stare it doesn't matter what I'm doing, they always have me completely captivated. Well guys, it is time to bring this here van adventure to a close. If you guys made it this far in the video, then consider subscribing. I'd be stoked to have you guys on board and make sure and hit that bell next to the subscribe button because anytime videos like this are uploaded, you will be notified. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure and leave them in the comments section down below. And guys, definitely make sure and smash the hell out of this like button because being able to subscribe, like, and comment, that's what get these videos out to the masses. All right guys, I've got a long cold hike back to the van and then I'm out of here. Peace out, keep on trucking. <laughs>